Welcome to Him for Her Radio, women's hot topics. Ladies, this show is for you. Find clarity, discernment, and discover who you are in Jesus Christ, all while exploring the hot topics of the day. She's an evangelist, founder, and president of Him for Her Ministries, and she's here to tell it like it is. Your host, Suge Burry. Hello, everyone. My name is Sugbury, and I'm so glad that you joined us on Crosswalk. No, I'm not Lee Michaels, as you can tell. I am Sugbury, and I am the host of Him For Her Radio, Women's Hot Topics. I'm so excited to be here with you today as I am filling in for Lee Michaels. What is Lee doing? He is working that board for us. Thank you so much, Lee, for jumping in and allowing me to uh, be here in your spot. My pleasure. It's fun to have you here. Fun to do it from this side of the glass. Yeah, we'll see if you say that at the end of the show. You know, we got a hot topic. (laughs) In fact, this caused me a sleepless night last night. Let me tell you a little bit about the topic. Um, Him for Her Radio, Women's Hot Topics, we often talk about just all topics that are related to women. I mean, we have such an exciting show. And after we air here at AM 980, The Mission, at 11 o'clock on Saturdays and uh, Sundays at 3 o'clock. It then goes to podcasts. You can find it on AM 980 The Mission or anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. Um, and today we had a special show planned with my friend Becky Danielson, who is here with me today. But something happened last night. I was watching uh, the Republican convention, and all of a sudden across the bottom of our screen, we saw about all the riots and the mayhem and the looting that were currently happening then and there last night, this is current, um, in our own city. And I thought, no, we can't be talking about the topic we're going to talk about. We need to have a voice, people. And that's what the topic today is called. Um, The topic today is called, Where Are the Christians? And I want us to have a voice and women need to have a voice. Now, gentlemen, I know that if you're driving home from work or you're listening because you're cooking, ha ha ha, or you're doing something else, I know that this is going to be vital to you too as well. And I believe that maybe there's a God appointment here for someone. Uh, We're going to upload this to YouTube when we're all done. We're Zooming this right now, currently as we're speaking. But I really want you to have an open heart and look to see maybe God is talking to you um, at this time. Now, why do I feel we need to have a voice as a Christian? Not only do we need to have a voice, we need to take action. Because I believe, friends, we are going to see Christ face to face as believers in him. And he's going to say, how come you just talked and you didn't take any action? And after I was watching last night on the news, all the mayhem, all the destruction, all the bullying that is going on, I said, enough is enough. And I called my friend Becky first thing this morning. (laughs) And I said, Becky, we are changing the topic title of this show for today. So ladies, if you were planning on listening, those of you who sent me all of your topic ideas for mom shaming, we're going to do it. We're going to tape that show. We're going to record it. And then it's going to be on in a couple of weeks. So listen for it on our social media. Um, But we're going to be held responsible to God for our actions and our inactions. My husband and I were this morning doing devotions. Shout out to my lover, Blair. Hey, baby. We've been together almost 40 years, and I tell you, there's nothing, my friends, that's more romantic than doing devotions with your spouse in the morning. The show we had planned for today, I told him, just doesn't feel right. I feel like it doesn't seem appropriate. And he said, Shug, what do you want to talk about? And as I thought about it, I said, women and men, we need to be acting. We need to do actions to our words. And that is a hot topic. Think about these words, my listening friends. Injustice, riots, mayhem, looting, censored speech, turning away from law and order, submitting to the fear of the people instead of doing what's right in God's eyes, hurricanes, floods, consuming all sorts of fires that are happening in California and Colorado, earthquake, Kids against parents, parents against kids, sex trafficking of children, addictions that are destroying families that are getting way out of line. And not to mention, we have got a plague in our world called COVID. I think to me, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm off. It sounds like maybe the end of times is nearing even closer than ever. Well, hey, if you don't think that time is short, you got to get right with Jesus Christ. That's for sure. You better be right with him. And today I'm going to tell it like it is. I've been known to do that. I usually always give my opinion, whether it's, you know, asked for or not. 
But uh, the importance of this radio show right now that we have today is that we're listening here, not only in the Twin Cities, but nationally after we post it on podcast, that we have a voice. Where are the Christians? Now, no one knows for sure when Jesus is coming, but there's a good way to think of the second coming. We plan as though Jesus isn't coming for a thousand years, but we live as if he's coming in the next 10 minutes, friends. We need to be held accountable for our actions, for our thoughts, for our deeds. Today, Miss Becky Danielson is with me, and we, together, are going to practice our constitutional right in freedom of speech. Are we professionals? Absolutely not. We're women. I think that almost makes us a little better than professionals. Right, Becky? Amen. Yeah, amen to that. (laughs) We are women, and we are agree to disagree from time to time. Now, I brought her on because I'm a little hyped up about this conversation. I'm a little fired up, and she is usually the calm to my storm. So we're going to be talking about some hot topics, whether or not you agree with us. But maybe you'll hear something new from a female perspective. With that said, may I introduce you to my friend, Becky Danielson. Becky, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me, Shogun. Even though the topic changed, I think it's great. Yeah. It's it's good to keep up with current events and everyone wants to know. And I can't wait on. to tell our listeners how God already went ahead of us and we were on the same page before oh. I told her that we're changing topics. Yep, I had a sleepless night too. Yeah, but friends, let me tell you a little bit about my friend Becky Danielson. She is a licensed parent and family educator. Her favorite title is mom. She and her husband Scott have two young adult sons. She's a former kindergartner and first grade teacher. I can see that in you. You're so sweet. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. (laughs) With a Bachelor of Arts in Elementary Education and a Master's in Education as well as licensure in early childhood. Becky candidly shares her life as a Christian wife, mom, and educator in small group settings, workshops, and at national conferences. She is the co-author of Raising Little Kids with Big Love, Raising Big Kids with Supernatural Love, and another book, Empowering Parents, Putting Faith First. She encourages and inspires parents online. And you know where you guys can find her, which I hope you look her up? It's faithfirstparent.com. I'm going to repeat it. All three words are together, faithfirstparent.com. Thank you, Becky, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Shug, for having me. So you might be wondering, well, what are you going to talk about for a full hour of today's events? We are going to talk about, first of all, our our honor being a Christian and also being an American. I have traveled over to Africa many, many times to preach in the prisons. That's what I do. I do prison ministry as well as um, we work with women across the whole world. Him for Her Ministries, look at it up, H-I-M number for Her Ministries. And you can just go to himforher.org to see what we're all about. There's five initiatives. And the first one is radio. Yep, I know you're not surprised because you're listening to me right now. But radio is one of our initiatives. The second one is speaking. I speak around the world uh, and I bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to some of the darkest places. Um, Prison ministry is the third initiative where we go into prison. When it was open, they're on a lockdown right now. I was just recently asked by Prison Fellowship Ministries, Becky, I don't know if you know this, to be um, on their national speaking tour this year when the prisons open back up again. As well as we go in and we work with the women inside of prison. We've got a prison mentoring. That's the fourth initiative. We go in three to six months prior to their release, walk alongside them inside of prison, and walk with them up to two years post-release. And the last initiative that we have is housing for women leaving prison. Okay, so I really encourage you to go on our website, himforher.org. I'm not new to this world of crime. I'm not new to the some of the things in this world that... They might say, well, sugar, you're just a housewife in some suburb. No, I'm not. I am a woman called by Jesus Christ to be his voice. Our mission statement is to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the darkest corners of the world. And that's exactly what we're de- doing here today. And I'm so glad to be with my friend, uh, Becky Danielson. So we're going to be talking about the unrest. We're going to be talking about the riots. We're going to be talking about what's going on in this world. We're going to be talking about what is your response as a Christian. We're going to get real and we're going to tell it like it is. We're going to talk about our police. What are we doing to support our police department? And what if we support our police department? Does that mean that we're going against what some of these other initiatives are that are out there that people want us to follow? It just seems like all havoc is running loose in our country, and I'm not hearing from Christians. 
And I try to stay tuned in to just about every show there is. And those Christians that are speaking seem to be the minority few instead of the majority. Becky, I'm so glad that you're here with us. What are you looking forward to this next hour with us? I'm looking forward to being able to talk about what we can do, what God sends us to do through his word, and what we can do um, just not only in our little communities, but in the world, Amen. and especially in our country right now yeah. with election company up and such. Hey, wake up, friends. Wake up. If you're a Christian, wake up. We need to start to be unified together. I can't wait to come right back to be with you. Hello, hello, my friends. What are you doing out there? Are you cooking? Are you cleaning? Are you driving? My name is Sugbury, and I am the host today of Crosswalk. I'm filling in for Lee Michaels. Mr. Lee Michaels himself is producing the show Behind the Glass. Thank you, Lee, for all you do. My pleasure. Thank you to too, Shug. I've got a guest with me here today. Her name is Becky Danielson. Welcome, Becky, from Faith First Parent. Thank you very much, Shug. And our show is Him For Her Radio, Women's Hot Topics. We air on Saturdays at uh, 11. It's 11. I was going to say noon, but that would be in Denver. It's 11 o'clock here in the Twin Cities um, and also on Sundays at 3 o'clock. I hope you join us and find us on podcast. All of our past shows are on that. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about something that not only did I not sleep last night, I woke up fired up. And those of you who are watching us on Zoom because we are uploading this to YouTube, Look at my eyes. I'm exhausted. I was up all night praying. And the topic we were going to talk about, we're not talking about today because it got flipped after all the riots and the looting and the mayhem that was happening in Minneapolis unexpectedly last night. And so as I'm watching this, I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed. In fact, I am embarrassed. I'm not only embarrassed for God, I'm embarrassed for our city. I'm embarrassed for our state. I'm embarrassed because of the government. I am just embarrassed. Did I make that clear, Becky? Did you guys pick up on that? I think you're a little embarrassed, Chuck. I am embarrassed. Why? Because it doesn't feel like any action is being taken. Now, I am all for peaceful protests. I am all for standing up for injustice. Please don't misunderstand me on that. Don't send me emails saying, Shug, you don't understand. What I don't get is the looting, the mayhem, the destruction. I was watching WCCO Channel 4 locally. He was on the rooftop and he looked right down across the street at one of the coffee shops. They're bashing in the windows. They're jumping in there. They're ruining everything. I mean, they're going only after the places where they can collect stuff, like J.B. Hudson, taking out food, you know, ransacking what's the word what is that ransacking 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 target you know i mean really is that how we stand up for injustice no it's not in fact it's a cop-out way as far as i'm concerned i'm going to tell it like it is and so um i brought someone who's much more level-headed than myself mrs danielson here with me today so becky let me ask you this question what is the christ followers response to destruction looting riot evil what should we be doing Well, I think, first of all, we need to agree that racism is not okay. Mm -hmm. And why isn't it okay? Because we're all created in God's image. So let's take that, lay it out right on the table immediately. Um, I think then there are some tips, some action items for Christians. I think practicing empathy is is one of the first things we can do. And now I I don't want people to confuse sympathy with, with empathy. Okay. Sympathy is feeling sorry for someone. Oh, I'm so sorry you're in that situation. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. No, empathy is walking in their shoes. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, tell me more. I understand. If I don't understand, tell me more so I can understand really well. But feel that pain of the other person and offer compassion. Um, Our First Amendment provides freedom of speech, and we can protest. We can speak about our grievances and such, but we're to do it civilly and respectfully. That's how you get people to hear. I mean, when you think of a toddler, and I work mostly with families with little kids, um, up to teenagers, when a child is having a tantrum, you don't let the tantrum go on and on. You step in and you take care of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, good analogy. I like that. Well, and it happens for teenagers too. If your teenager is hollering and screaming, you step in and you ask for civility. Mm -hmm. Like when you can speak to me respectfully, then we'll talk. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, it kind of covers the the um, the freedom of speech thing. You can talk, but let's let's do this in a, a way that everybody can talk civilly to one another. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that I, that really has been on my mind, and last night I had a night like yours, around and around and around, mm-hmm. thinking about. Oh, I'm glad we changed our our topic because you were but, feeling the same thing I was. Oh yes, and when you called this morning, it was like a weight was taken from my shoulder because it seemed 
really shallow yes. as compared to what's going on right now yes. in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm, I was thinking about, you know, how God gave us 10 handwritten rules, 10 that he carved into rock with his own finger. Um, when you look at the stealing, the destruction of property, the killings, um, all of this is contrary to the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. It's like we're not going to take the rules and flip them. But what about don't the people, Becky, that say, oh, well, they're not going to listen st- unless we make a really big stink about it? Well, how do you handle a child when they take a really big stink of something? I wasn't as good a parent as you were. Well, well, I'm not a perfect parent either. <laughs> that's that's why I talk to parenting groups, because I'm not perfect. No. <laughs> um, but I think when when people can speak calmly and to look into each other's eyes and listen and hear and l- use civil language, mm-hmm. you can accomplish more than yelling and screaming and breaking things. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you have a disagreement with your spouse, you throw things and yell and scream. No. Oh, that's not a very good way to have a marriage. Mm -mm. You know, in our court system, do the do the judges, does the judge start screaming at the the convicted, soon to be convicted Mm -hmm. people? No, that's not how we solve problems. We have law and order. Exactly. And, you know, as a matter of fact, my husband and I were doing a Bible study. um, uh, Was it this morning? The day has been long. And it was on the fishes and loaves um, and out of the book of Mark. And it was just so cool because God has got to order. He had everybody sat down in groups on the hillside, on the grass, and distributed the two fish and the five loaves to everybody. God is a God of order, exactly. not disorder. Now, I know well, that we got to talk about anger. If I could jump in real quick, Becky. Yep. With anger, um, Jesus got angry. He had righteous anger. And somebody might say, well, look at Jesus toppled the tables. Well, that's when they were going against God's will. Right. That's when they, and, and, and granted, injustice is not right. I mean, what has been happening to George Floyd and everybody else? Absolutely. Everyone's in agreement that's wrong and that needs to stop. But what the problem is, is that when the people just go around looting and rioting for any old reason, just, I think it's almost like, oh, hey, where can we go rob? We're waiting for the next event to happen. Exactly. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I I think personal responsibility comes into it. How about the golden rule? Mm -hmm. Jesus taught that as well. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you were the owner of that store, would you want someone to come smash the windows and steal everything that you've worked for for years and years and years? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, oh, corporate America, well, that that doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does, because Mm -hmm. all of us are paying more for all of these items and the repairs and the insurance and everything else that goes into fixing things after these destructive riots. And God bless America that you can have a dream to have your own small business. Oh, my goodness. Save your money. You know, there was a fireman that they had showed um, a couple months ago. The fireman had saved every dime he had, um, retired from the fire department, opened up his own bar. COVID happened. He couldn't open. And then as soon as he reopened, then the riots happened and they destroyed it. Yeah. Poor guy. And this is not what should be happening in America. Um, these small businesses, people are working hard. They're striving to do the best that they can. And these riots are happening, and they call it in the name of justice. It's not justice. Mm-mm. It's it's irresponsible. It's destructive. Um, it's disgusting. It's sad and oh. embarrassing. People wake up. You're, you're kind of right. I feel like people are acting like toddlers, and they they need to rise up. I know I'm going to get mm-hmm. some flack for that. But I'm all about, like I said, I can't say it um, clearly enough. I am all about what's right and justice, but this is not justice. This is mayhem. And then to allow, uh, you know, Governor Walz, he lets them just go ahead and go, you know, even last night when he was speaking, I was listening to his very well chosen words that were politically correct and then they said no we're going to make sure that the police stop i was listening to the police chief they're going to stop they're going to do something about this what happens wcco films the fact that these guys are breaking in and one guy got bashed in the head who was just walking by a bystander and the police just drove right on by they had some kind of instructions maybe they were surveying it before the national guard got there i don't know it's sad it is. It's really sad. And I, I, I don't want to get flack for it either. But I think, you know, if, if everyone is responsible for themselves, mm-hmm. if everybody can take a look at what's going on across the country and just calm down, how can we figure this out mm-hmm. in a way? You know, we're, we're told constantly, do the work, do the work, do the work. And I, I get that. Mm-hmm. We need to do better. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have a history that's, that's, pretty dark in a lot of places mm-hmm. in the United States. Amen. 
But I think we can fix that. We need to fix it. Absolutely. But we are not responsible for generations ago of their no. sins and their issues. And if as long as we're working towards mm-hmm. trying our best for equal, I mean, it, I mean, all lives matter as far as I'm concerned. Every single person that God created is the same in mm-hmm. his eyes. Absolutely. And we na- need to really take a, a hard look in each other's eyes and know that that person was made by God. Well, the other piece, though, Shug, is that we've rejected God and his word. Mm-hmm. You know, God's a gentleman. Ruth Graham Lotz said that when 9-11 happened. You know, he's a gentleman. He walked away. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't want him to turn his back on the United States. We're built on the providence of God. We mm-hmm. are built on faith. We are built on, on, on Christianity. And I'm wondering, though, how many listeners out there every day pray for President Trump Pray for their mayor. Pray mm-hmm. for their police chief. Mm-hmm. Pray for all of these others that God has set in leadership positions. And it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're sitting on. Absolutely Because God not. allowed that person to be the yes. president. Allowed that person. And as difficult as it is for me at times to listen to some of our government officials and their lack of response mm-hmm. and all talk, I have to remember God has allowed them to have this place of leadership. Right. And we are not doormats as Christians, but Mm-mm. boy, we better get on our knees and pray. Yeah. And we need to start to rise up. I mean, really, praying is super important. That's the foundation of everything, and that's where it starts. But we need to rise up and do something about this. Um, Let me just ask you this question now, and then we're going to carry it into the next segment as well. Um, What about the police department, Becky? How? What do you think about this defund uh, the police and what's happening in America? We we need our police, and we need to support our police. It's funny. Right before you called um, this morning to talk about maybe switching the topic and such. Um, I was in such angst about this whole defunding the police and what, what happened downtown last night. I called our local police department. You did? I called. And I called the non-emergency this line. This morning, before this morning, you and I talked. This morning. I awesome. called the non-emergency line, not 911, talked to um, the, the receptionist and told her how incredibly grateful I am that our local police department has kept us safe that uh, we are grateful every time Scott and I say see a police officer, we wave and give them thumbs up. So mm-hmm. we're that, that crazy family that does that. Mm-hmm. And she laughed. And I told her, you know, with all of the awful things that people say, we want you to know that we support you. Oh. And she put me right through to the police chief to leave a voicemail for him. You know, I bet you they don't get that very often. No. Yeah, that's just I amazing. So. I got more to talk about on this. Will you hang with me, Becky, for just a minute? Absolutely. Okay, listeners, don't go anywhere. It's going to get even hotter than this. Don't be anxious, friends, about anything. And as we talk about the things that irritate us and give us anger and righteousness, I tell you, Jesus is going to hold us accountable for our actions and our inactions. Today's topic is called, Where Are the Christians? I'm with my friend, Becky Danielson, who is an author, a fabulous author with faithfirstparent.org. Look her up. Becky, again, thank you for being here. And we were talking about the police department just a little bit ago, and you had called the police department, left a message uh, for the chief of police to tell him how thankful for you are as to what he's doing to keep your particular city safe. Yes. I want to talk about that just for a minute. What do you think about all this defunding police? I think it's, it's a really bad idea. I think we need to reconsider. I think we need to readjust. I think there are um, bad apples in every organization. Mm-hmm. There are bad police, just like there are bad teachers. There are bad lawyers. There are, are across the board. Every every single career area has someone. Well, you know, it's really evil. It's not. Is yeah. what it is. The oh. enemy is in this world, and our battle is not against flesh and blood. Absolutely. And I just, I definitely think justice needs to happen. But to defund the police, I mean, look at what happened last night in Minneapolis. What, are you just going to let things go run run amok and not do anything about it? I can't right. tell you how many Minnesota civilians I have talked to, and they said, what has happened to our state? We want to move out. I know. And and I think, too, with Governor Walls, I think he's done a lot of things right. And I'm not going to start bashing our governor. But I think as a teacher, he should see that this is almost a bully situation Mm -hmm. in which he needs to step in, step up and and get it taken care of. Get the police, the National Guard, whatever it is, so that we don't have this mess in our city. You know, I don't feel safe in the state. Oh, we don't go downtown anymore. I I, No, either do we. And they had some of our favorite restaurants. Us, too. You know, did you happen to watch? And as a radio... um, personality 
host. I like to watch everything. So I was watching the Democratic Convention. I watched the Republican Convention. And last night, the Attorney General, Daniel Cameron, did you see him speak? He was fabulous. You know, they called him a star in the Washington Post. And friends, I don't want you to say, well, there's just two white women, if you're watching us on Zoom, um, two white women with him for her radio on Crosswalk telling us what we should think and do. But listen, we're women. And we are Christians, and we love Jesus Christ. And here's um, something, a couple quotes from this fabulous Attorney General, Daniel Cameron, who was the very first black Attorney General of Kentucky. And on the night of the Republican Convention, it started to really light up when he spoke, and I'm going to share a few words of what he said. Cameron, a millennial who became the state's first Republican Attorney General in nearly a century, stood out as the night's breakout star Cameron did not spew pro-Trump talking points. Instead, Cameron expertly threaded the needle between the severe over-policing, that's happening, my friends, over-policing, seen in horrific police killings of unarmed black people, such as George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, with the severe under-policing of our urban centers. In short, Cameron understands that law and order means as much as protecting the private party of small business owners— We've seen that they need to be protected, our small business owners, riddled with rioters, as it does protecting black folks who fall prey to injustice in our justice system. But even as anarchists mindlessly tear up the American cities while attacking police officers and innocent bystanders, we do recognize those who earnestly strive for peace, for justice, and for equality, Cameron said. You know what that tells me, Becky? That tells me that we need to pray all the more for our police department. They are targets. Mm -hmm. They have got a target on their back. The poor mothers. I mean, they are sons. They are brothers. They are husbands. And most of all, they're United States citizens as well. Who's protecting our police? Exactly. And who is protecting, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these police officers have children that Mm -hmm. they leave every day. Can you imagine being one of those little ones and wondering if mommy or daddy are coming home that evening? I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have any police department. They're just all going to quit because of the lack of support of the civilians as well. And mm-hmm. I do the same thing you do. Police officer goes by. I'm waving at him. I hope he doesn't think I'm doing something otherwise. But I'm waving at him and thanking him. And, you know, we need to do what we can do to support these guys. Send a note. Men and women. Drop off treats or make that phone call like I did this morning. <laughs> the the woman who answered the phone was really surprised. Really? She said, really? You I said, absolutely. I was giggling at the treat part. My sister's listening. Hey, sister. And we don't do treats. You know, this just isn't in our, our homemaker you know, <laughs> vocabulary. But, um, you know, it's important that we support our, um, our men and women in blue. Absolutely. All of, I mean, it wasn't too long ago during COVID. We were all just praising the police department, the fire department, the frontline workers. And now in a blink of an eye, the enemy who is Satan has been able to take this whole world, turn it upside down. And now what is right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Okay, I'm getting irritated. I'm going to have to ask Becky another question. <laughs> okay, so we do have a voice. I did like what um, Cameron had said. Um, and he is the one that's frustrated as well. So friends... I hope you realize you need to wake up. We have a voice. Don't hide in your homes. Don't bury yourself under the pillow. Don't, I mean, sometimes we have to turn off the news too because it's just a little overdrive. Um, But let's use our voice. We're called to speak truth and love. And as I was praying regarding this show, I thought, what is my feeling right now, Becky? I was asking that. What is Mm -hmm. my feeling right now? And my feeling is my heart is breaking for God. I can't help but begin to have a hard heart against some of the violence. And honestly, sometimes I look at the violence and I look at the mayhem and I feel like we've gone a couple generations back. You know, I feel like we've gone a hundred steps back instead of forward. How do you Mm -hmm. think this can be fixed? You know, it's, it's one of those things that my, my emotions start switching to. They flip between frustration and anger and fear and, and I get distraught, and then I get concerned about my own children, and I get worried about what's happening in our country, and it just, it, it breeds this sense of angst mm-hmm. that's hard. And then you throw a pandemic on top of it, it's too much for people to handle. You know what? My husband keeps laughing. He goes, look at the rioters. At least they're COVID-friendly with their masks on. And I said, heck yeah. no, they don't want to be identified. I know. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, That's really. right. That's right. But I think when when we're really confused and frustrated with today's events, we fall back to scripture. I love Second Corinthians ten five. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We know God is present and we're to pray. He's powerful, so we're to be bold and not fear. God is love and we're to love unconditionally. God is just, we're accountable. And through that justice, we are accountable for our actions and how we respond to people now during all of this as well. God is forgiving, so we're supposed to forgive those who sin against us. And God is sovereign and we are to follow his ways period. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean we're a doormat. No, absolutely not. And you know, we need to speak up to the current in office um, elective officials that are there and Mm -hmm. say our piece, do something, make a change, keep us safe. You know, for me, the biggest thing is the vote. Now it's not till November, we got to do some stuff before that. But my thing is the vote. Friends, if you have not gone out to vote before, I'm looking at the camera right now, I'm gonna we're zooming this (laughs) friends, listen to me. Oh my gosh. You know, people died for us in the armies, in the military, in the Marines, in the Navy, all of the branches. And I got to tell you, there are sons and brothers and husbands that died for our freedom to vote. I have been to Africa so many times to preach in their uh, prisons. And I got to tell you, to go to a third world country and see the situations that's happening there, um, I feel like we're closely following in some of these terrible footsteps. And at the Republican convention last night, I heard them say, we're going to stop it. And this vote is what will stop it. And so it's not you're voting for a person. You're voting for what they believe in. And for me, what I am voting for and what I believe in is the Second Amendment. I'm voting for the next Supreme Court justice. I'm voting for the Electoral College. I'm voting for the police. Hello, law and order. And I have to tell you that they were so clear. Pence, a Christian man who loves Jesus Christ right from the beginning. Pence was a man who said, we are going to protect our police departments and our military. The veterans who fought and died for this country, I'm voting for. I'm voting for the flag, the United States of America. I'm voting for my right to speak my opinion. So right now, if you don't like it, this is my right, but I'm doing it peacefully and without force. I'm voting for secure borders because we're not a country without borders. I'm voting for my right to praise my God, Jesus Christ, without fear. I'm voting for every unborn soul that the Democrats want to murder. Do you know there's been more abortions, murdered abortions, than there have been any other murders or any other wars combined? It's a genocide, and it's got to stop. I'm voting for freedom in the American dream. I'm voting for good against evil. And I'm not just voting for one person. I'm voting for not only my future, but the future of our country. God bless America. Becky, doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on politically, don't you find it difficult to start to share your political beliefs or even have an easy Mm -hmm. conversation with your neighbor? Absolutely. It's hard. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to discuss it. Their way is right. And we have a very difficult time not only listening to one another, but actually hearing one another and having civil conversations about it. You know, I don't remember a time in my old age here that um, it was just so animately Democrat or Republican. I mean, no matter what. And Mm -hmm. and there was, I I try to listen to both sides. I'm trying to, like I said, I'm voting for the cause and I'm voting for the right candidate. Um, Friends, I want you to hang on because next time we're going to talk about our role in this and how we can make a change here in our own backyard. We are talking about the topic of where are the Christians? Where are the Christians in this upside down crazy world with all this stuff going on? And if this show is to do anything, it is to empower you. It is to encourage you. And, you know, whether this is the end time or not, we don't know. Jesus could come in the next five minutes while we're in the supermarket, while we're driving down the road. And are we ready? He's going to hold us accountable for what we did and for what we haven't and the opportunities he gave us there. And so I'm an evangelist. And uh, I've got just a fabulous sister. I've got one in California. She's praying for me at this moment. I've got another fabulous sister here in Minnesota. And I know that she's over there in the background going, right on, sister, speak it. But I want you to know that the most important thing we can do is share the good news of Jesus Christ. We can talk all we want about the mayhem and the craziness that's going on. But unless we, sh- we just cover it with the love 
let's get the love thing right, people. That's a, a, something my pastor, Joel Johnson, has coined at Westwood Church. Let's get the love thing right. And if you're thinking smashing windows is getting the love thing right, you are off base. Amen. Becky, what are your thoughts about that? You know, we need to get the love thing right. We need to love everyone. We were not told that we get to pick and choose. Mm-hmm. We look at everyone through God's eyes mm-hmm. and not our own. Mm-hmm. We need to be compassionate, empathetic. Um, we need to camp on Lamentations three twenty two through 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And when I read that in my, my Bible study this morning, I thought, you know, God's love is so great, mm-hmm. and he's given it to us. Christ died for us. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in us that mm-hmm. is so strong, it resurrects from the dead. Mm-hmm. We can love anybody. Amen. We Amen. can love anybody. And it doesn't matter who it is, where they've been, what they've done. And, you know, um, it, I shared with you all that I speak in prisons around the world. And I got to tell you, there's nothing greater than to watch um, you share the love of Jesus Christ and how you tell them Jesus has not forgotten you. He knows you. He knows you right where you are. And he's kissing your cheek at this very moment, reminding you, I'm waiting for you. And what is he waiting for you to do? He's waiting for you to turn towards him, to turn away from your sin, to turn away from your past, turn toward him and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Father God, we can't do any of this stuff without receiving you in our lives. Your Holy Spirit is what gives us this love. Your Holy Spirit is what gives us self-control. Your Holy Spirit is what gives us patience and all of the fruits of the Spirit. And Lord, I'm asking that if there's a listener right now that feels convicted that, man, I just haven't asked Jesus into my life. That you realize right now you are a sinner. That you realize that the way your life is going is not the direction you want it to go in. Have you surrendered to God and asked him, the gentleman, to come into your life? Because God's going to take his hands off the wheel and allow all this mayhem to happen until we as Christians rise up in the power that we have been given. Do you know that you have as much power in your faith to move a mountain? We are sitting on a gold mine of power that we're not even beginning to tap in Jesus Christ. And so I want us as Christians to rise up right now, to take a stand for what is right in this country, to call our officials and say, I want action taken in the name of Jesus for safety and security for my babies and my family that this writing has to end and it has to end now and it's not going to be just talk, but it's going to be happening in Jesus Christ. Oh, we, we can do a whole show just on the miracles of what I have seen Jesus do that would blow your mind. And so, Becky, what gives you peace in, in what scripture speaks to you when you think about sharing your bold faith with other people? You know, I think... In this particular time, it has to be about peace, and it has Mm. to be no fear, and Mm -hmm. people need to know. It says, do not be afraid 365 times, but I love Philippians 4, 7, and 8. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And then he says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, what is noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Mm. And I think when we when we look at that list of what we're supposed to key into and how we look at the world and how we look at people that differ from us either in opinion or politics or any other conflict that we have with someone, mm-hmm. you know, look for the good. Look for the good. You can always find good in anything. Yeah, and we need to see them through Jesus' eyes. Absolutely. When I start to get frustrated and hardened heart, you know, I'm far from perfect Mm -hmm. friends. You know, I just got to remember that Jesus loves them. I have seen the hearts of women and men in prisons around the world with the worst crimes behind them melt at the surrender of Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ in their life. It's it's so beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And in Romans 10, 9, it says, if you confess with your lips, what does that mean? I mean, just say with your lips, Jesus is Lord. And when you believe in your heart that God raised him to dead from the dead, you don't need to be a scholar. You just need to understand he's there and he paid our price for our sin. Three simple words, you are saved. Oh man, saved from what? You are saved from the pit of hell, my friends. And I got to tell you, nothing can snatch you out of the hand of our Lord when he has you there. 
When you say yes to Jesus Christ, you're on the greatest joy ride you will ever have in your life. Will your life be perfect? Absolutely not. But what's going to be perfect in your life is your Holy Spirit living inside of you. It changed my life. Scripture says in Philippians 4, 7 to 8, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Becky, we are going to be praising God. Sit, sit, think, think, not sing, sing about such things. No, think about such things. Nobody would want to hear me singing at all. And I'm just so proud. I am so proud of the fact that I am an American of the United States. Absolutely. Couldn't be more proud to be a uh, citizen of any nation. We are the greatest nation in the world. We are. And we've had a chance to air our views today. Do you think people got the message? I kind of think so, yes. What do you think the bottom line was? (laughs) (laughs) Keep those police strong. Let them know how much you really, really are grateful and thankful for all they do. Be kind to others. Empathize with others. Listen Mm -hmm. to others. Get out there and speak up. Mm. Be bold. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I had my little prayer group praying um, a couple weeks ago. My one of my prayer requests was that I would be bold. Mm. And then with this topic change today, I texted all of them and I said, "You were all praying too much. (laughs) Look at what God does. (laughs) It's time to get bold, Becky, my friend. Time to get bold. Absolutely. You know." I just thank you so much for coming on. I thank you so much for for what you do for Faith First Parent. Look them up. Oh, friends, she is just a wealth of information. Faithfirstparent.com. And uh, her fabulous books. Tell us the three books that you wrote again. There's Raising Little Kids with Big Love, Mm -hmm. Raising Big Kids with Supernatural Love. Mm -hmm. Both have uh, study guides to go alongside. And Empowered Parents Putting Faith first. And all three were uh, co-authored with Lori Wildenberg. Well, I love it. Friends, we don't have much time left, but I just want to remind you to come and tune into our show. Listen to it on podcast, Him For Her, Radio Women's Hot Topics. And we tackle the tough topics of today. What are some of the topics that we've talked about? How to raise adult children, keeping your mouth (laughs) shut and the doormat out. I'm still learning on that one. How to stay safe in this crazy world. We talk about different scenarios, different shooting scenarios. Where should you sit at work? Where should you sit in a restaurant? What should you do? Adultery, aging. We're going to be talking about mom shaming and dysfunctional families are on there too. There's over 80 of them. My friends, look them up. Listen to us. Subscribe. My name is Shugbury. I love you. Over and out.